I'm Bob Williams. I was born 1921 on uh, Otsego Road. We didn't go to the hospital at that time for deliveries. And um, I re remember things from when I was about three years old. I still remember them. I remember going to the um, uh, Verona AC ball games down at Verona High School. I remember uh, the Verona Canoe Club. I remember in the fire department. Uh, when I was born, the fire department was uh, probably 11, 12 years old. My father was, my father and two of his brothers were charter members of the fire department. Um, they were also charter members of the rescue squad. And uh, I remember when, um, going way back, when we had uh, milk deliveries from uh, uh, Becker's during the winter time, they'd come with the, uh, the sleigh during a snowstorm and deliver milk to Landing Avenue School. Um, what else do I remember? <laughs> I remember uh, Ike, the Iceman, do you remember him? Sure. And uh, Ike used to uh, deliver ice to all the houses and uh, if we had a snowstorm he had a makeshift plow that he plowed the sidewalks without charge. Uh, we had um, also a, f a man deliver fish on Fridays. He had a little wagon that he kept stored down near Stedler's, down towards the center of town. And he'd go along and uh, call out fish, and uh, people would go out and order a fish. He'd clean it right there, and he had fresh fish. And we also had vegetable wagons from uh, uh, Vitalis, right? That's right. And uh, we had, uh, I remember Golden Lad Farms in Verona, uh, milk delivery. Uh, Mr. Rothhouse from Pine Brook delivered uh, raw milk before pasteurized came out. And um, well, that's, that's enough for now. <laughs> Give Mike a chance. Well, I come here a lot later than Robert did, but I uh, was born in 1928, and I attended, as far as school, I attended Lanning Avenue School, then junior high, and then the high school. And as I, uh, Bob remembers, I remember the Rhone AC, and I grew at a canoe club. We also had games between the, the, the grammar schools. Grove Avenue, Forest Avenue, Brookdale, and Lanning Avenue. And we were fortunate enough to be pretty good. And that's because of Doc Geltz. That's right. Doc Geltz was our coach. And uh, we just seemed that everybody in the town seemed to work together. There wasn't too many problems at that time, Bob, right? No, we had a, a close knit. Uh, community. We did, yeah. Um, did, you went to a landing avenue? Yeah. You didn't have um, Mr. Rice, did you? Sure. Oh, gee. <laughs> Mr. Rice and Miss Gaz and Miss, Miss Biggs. Yeah, Miss Biggs. Miss, Williams, Miss Cruden. Miss Cruden, Miss Williams. Uh, well, did we have any, we didn't even, only male teacher was Rice, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And who was the shop teacher? Did we have a shop? We didn't have a shop. No. That was down in grammar school. Uh, Mr. Rice, uh, my experience with Mr. Rice, one day uh, uh, after recess, we had recess in the morning because it was a long morning, and he caught uh, myself and I think Bob Erickson climbing in the window after recess. Well, he didn't know how many others climbed in, so he made the whole class go back out the window and come in the right way so we'd remember it. Well, that, that was better than uh, just a couple of us coming in. And uh, we had a, 
I don't know whether you had her, uh, Miss... Um, oh, Van Houten. No, the one that... Um, what was her name? That came over, substituted... Oh, from Tanaka. No. Miss Cos. From, from, yeah, from Miss Hawaii. Cos. She was a historian also. And she wrote one of the first books about Verona. And uh, she didn't teach anything as far as arithmetic and so forth. She just went over the history of Verona. That was all right. That was it was good. terrific. But um, also in sixth grade, uh, Mr. Um, Rice sent me in the office for something I did wrong. I'm not going to tell you what it was. And uh, evidently he had a chocolate bar there. And uh, I ate part of his chocolate bar. And he called my mother up and told her about it. It wasn't so bad that I had to go into his office, but I ate his chocolate bar. Well, we, we reimbursed him. We got him another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, I remember Lanning, as far as uh, the teacher, we, we had uh, Miss Gaz, yeah. and, and then Miss Tanaka came from uh, Hawaii. No, oh, Miss I, Biggs. No, Miss Biggs. I didn't Biggs. have her. All right, Miss Biggs went to Miss Biggs went to Hawaii, and Miss Tanaka came here. Oh, and they they switched, and then uh, Miss Tanaka lived on next door to us in Claremont Avenue in Mr. and Mrs. Ford's house for that year. And uh, it was pretty. They were very, very nice. We had uh, we had socials together, my parents and, and the Fords and Tanaka, uh -huh. and uh, they they got along very well. Um, do you remember? You remember the old twenty nine trolley car? Certainly. And. Um, we used to, um, 29 trolley car would go as far as the mountain house, and then you had to collect second fares. Remember, and there was a man that went up and down the aisle with his little hand machine, oh. and you had to put your nickel in there for the next fare. And uh, Otto. That's right. Yeah. And uh, when you'd come up from Montclair over the mountain, you could see the white rock. That's right. Now trees have grown up, you can't see it. But uh, if you know the history of Verona, you know all about the white rock. Uh, in fact, my son did a, a story on it, one of the books he wrote. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other things that happened. Some of the big fires the firemen went on. You remember the fire department after they came back from a fire they sounded back taps. That's right. You know why? Because the firemen would come back and they'd stay over there for half a day. And the wives wanted to know where they were. So I guess the wives got the mayor to sound back taps. That was they, the, they had to leave. That meant that they were home. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that one? You hear that mm -hmm. one before? Nope. And uh I remember going over to the firehouse. I was probably about three or four years old, and I climbed up in the American La France, which was very high off the floor, and there were buttons there. I pressed one, and that was a siren. Oh, that was a nice sound. But I got out of that truck so fast, and I, I stood underneath it, bent over, and the fireman come up from downstairs, where is that kid? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, another incident I can remember. We had a stuffed groundhog in the house, and uh, we got rid of it. It was there too long. It was getting moth-eaten, and uh, my dad took it over to the firehouse, and they put it up on top of the flagpole. Well, all the cars going down Bloomfield Avenue would stop and look at the groundhog sitting up on top of the flagpole. I think it even reached the Newark uh, Evening News. You remember the Newark Evening News, right? Oh, yeah. That was a good paper. Yes, very good. So I'm talking too much. Go, Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> no, I came in, you know, after Bob and all. And, and from Laney, we, you go to Bluefield, we went to Bloomfield Avenue School, which was a red brick building. I'm no longer there on, on Bloomfield Avenue. It should be. 
Yeah. And then we had also had sports there in uh, seventh and eighth grade. We had different teachers. Mr. I in Lanny, though, before we left, Mr. Gilligan became principal. Mr. Rice had left. Yeah. And he, Mike Gilligan. And he was pretty tough. And you had his, you had a toe the mark, or you were in trouble. We had a good group of people, a good group of students, I should say. We all seemed to stick together, and uh, we moved on. That, right down, you know, down, we would walk to school down the center of town, we'd walk Claremont Avenue down, and Sven Peterson was up the road, and Harry Doherty, and uh, Alderos were up on Martin Road. Oh, yeah, Nick Alderio. Uh, and uh, Frank's still there, Frank and his family. Uh, they, uh, Frank Aldero, and um, we all walked. Nobody, no one had a car at that time. Um, 1936, uh, I was in the first year high, and my dad died. Well, that was quite a loss. And um, I used to work at Henry's Delicatessen and a couple other places. And uh, I had to do something different. And that's when I went up to Fairfield uh, to the airport and learned how to fly. I had my license to fly solo when I was either 13 or 14 years old. And um, I had one of the best instructors up there, his name was Royal F. Ryder, who ended up, uh, the his history of uh, Roy Ryder ended up in the uh, Hall of Fame over in uh, Teterboro. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Royal Ryder taught me how to fly. After eight hours of instructions, he jumped out of the plane and says, you're on your own. I'm not going to risk any more of my life. <laughs> At that time, they got, uh, it was $6 an hour solo, $8 an hour with an instructor. So that meant the instructor made $2 an hour. And also, uh, he only, re uh, if I took 15 minutes of flying time, what'd he get, a half a dollar? <laughs> well, anyway, the day I soloed, he jumped out of the plane. He didn't know it, but I had my camera inside my jacket. And I flew down over Verona, and uh, here are some of the pictures. You can't see them with your camera, but here are some of the original pictures I took of Verona, uh, the White Castle, yeah. and Verona Lake. You can look at it. You probably recognize some. And uh, I came back to the airfield. They wondered where the hell I was. And uh, you were 14? Either 13 or 14. And uh, I have my original license. I can prove it. And um, anyway, I learned how to fly when I was uh, 13. And uh, I didn't learn how to drive a car until I was 17. I had a hard time with a car because it didn't have, uh, uh, you couldn't pull back on the steering wheel when you wanted to go up a hill. But I tried it. <laughs> and I'd give it left rudder and right rudder. And after I ended up on the church lawn, my, my brother who was teaching me how to drive a car, he gave up and I had to go to uh, automobile training school. <laughs> Easier to fly, yeah? <laughs> I knew how to fly. I could still fly. And uh, anyway, it was a great experience. And when I got out of high school, I ended up uh, signing up in the Naval Air Corps. And uh, I think I'm the only one in Verona that transferred from the Naval Air Corps to the Army Air Corps. And uh, you were in service, weren't you? The National Guard in West Orange. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had the cavalry, which was not too good. To, in, well, in, in anyway, you know, you're, uh, you think back at that time, we were the lucky ones and we came home. The real heroes didn't get to come home. 
And uh, I don't brag about what I did. I did what I was supposed to do most of the time. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I ended up over in Saipan, which is a long way from home. I couldn't go, there, go home on the weekends. <laughs> Yeah. But that's about all I... What about Verona? Verona. When I came back, Verona was... Uh, you could buy a house in Verona for $5,000. You buy a new car for five hundred, dollars right? That's right. And, uh, of course, many of the people didn't have the 5000 to buy the house. <coughs> And um, I ended up buying a house up in the country, up, up on one of the lakes, a lakefront house, for two thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. And I had that until the government came along and condemned all the property, eminent domain, and uh, they were going to make a national park up there, which they never did. The land is still vacant. They could have left all the people up there. And then you went and went back to Verona? Well, that was only a summer place. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go in the, in the time, you know, I, uh, from the time uh, we went to high school, from junior high to high school, we, had a, we were fortunate to have a uh, young gentleman come from Montclair to become an athlete in Verona. His name was Bucky Hatchet, William Hatchet with the nickname of Bucky, and he brought us through many big games, and he was a gentleman. He was, he was very uh, good he, uh, in basketball, football, and track. He was fantastic. He was very good. He, I think he put us, uh, he put us in, in the conference that we were in. He, they knew we were around. We were in there. And he, he has all all kinds of records at the high school and basket and track basketball and football. And uh, when I uh, went to school, high school, of course, uh, Doc was our baseball coach. Skip was our basketball coach, and Doc was also our soccer coach. Yeah, soccer track. And uh, then Skip took track and, and, uh, and uh, assisted football, and Warmouth was became a coach of football. And uh, he started football in 1939. And the first captain of uh, the Verona High School team was Angelo Solvanti. And they had a uh, fair season in the beginning, and since then Verona's excelled in, in many many fields of sports. They had uh, they had championships in their, state championships I think in every every uh, sport and, and many sectionals and many conference championships and we still have uh, interested people in the, in the in the season in football season the crowds are there and they had, they've been, they had a very good coach all the way through. They've had good coaching. The thing I did when I got out of school, I guess it was about a year and a half, and I opened up a uh, coffee shop, soda fountain coffee shop, and called it Green Acres with my uncle. And I, I was um, uh, there most of the time because he had a position. But we got to know everybody, everybody, you know, just Verona was just a, a, a very close at that time, and he, the neighbors. You knew everybody. And yeah, but if the if neighbors went out, the other neighbor would watch and see what was going on. We never locked our doors in Verona. Now you can lock them, and you still have to worry. <laughs> yeah, you never lie. That's right. I know. But, you know, 50 years ago, before I forget this one, Bob, 50 years ago, in March, the basketball team won the first and only state championship. And uh, at Rutgers Gym, they beat Ocean City 43-41, and Ocean City was heavily favored. They had won 22 straight games. 
and Verona beat them. And they had only had, and that's the and the basketball team at that time. They were moving to school. They didn't have a gym, and they work they worked outside outside. And it get, gets cold here in the winter. <laughs> that's but, why they played good. <laughs> yeah, yeah they were to be warm. <laughs> but I, I was fortunate. Who was your coach then? Uh, the coach was uh, Skip Skip Smith. When did uh, my brother come in to coach you? Well, he coached me in Landon Avenue, and, and in junior high. He uh, he was a uh, we had a we, we he was a taskmaster. Yeah, I think Doc taught him, didn't he? Yes. Well, Doc taught a lot of Doc taught the whole town. Yes, every school. The reason they called him Doc, he had a little. A satchel with the Red Cross on it. Yeah. Anybody get hurt, he'd run out with the satchel and take care of them. That's right. <laughs> get them back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, later, uh, we remembered Doc Geltz by having uh, a celebration, um, mostly due to my brother Elmer. He instigated it, and uh, I carried it through uh, after my brother passed away. We. Uh, Organized, we had a committee, a good committee. I don't know why I was president, but the committee did most of the work. And uh, we had Doc Geltz Day, that was May 1st. May 1st, what year was that? 76. 1976. And uh, we've arranged to fly Doc Geltz and his nephew down from Vermont, paid all his expenses. We had him driven out on the field to throw the first baseball when baseball season opened in that year. And then uh, we had a dinner for him over at the um, uh, Cedar Grove VFW. I think we sold 500 tickets and they were sold faster than the tickets for the Verona 100th year anniversary. They were sold in less than a week. and. Uh, we had a real, real benefit for him, gave him a nice check besides, and we completed his, that was one of the big highlights of his life. That's right. And I'm glad that I could have been a part of it, and I'm glad Mike was part of it. Yeah, when I, I go up to see Doc, and before, when he, was, when he, first, he first found out about this, he went to the doctor you know, up in Vermont, uh -huh. and he asked him, you think I'll, I'll last that long, right? He says, you're, you're in good shape. Just keep on going and you'll make it. <laughs> and, and he did make it. He was a, uh, our coach uh, in Verona. Just one coach for all, let's say, one, two, six schools, right? Yeah. yeah. And he did a terrific job. He arranged to have the May Day Parade where we, um, uh, kids from all the classes marched on Bloomfield Avenue underneath the largest American flag made by the Annan Company, which ended up on the uh, George Washington Bridge. Bridge. That's right. And uh, Doc Geltz is a person that should be definitely remembered. Yeah, he, he, well, he, had, he had everybody in. He, he was a terrific person. He'd see a cutting class going out sh uh, shoveling snow and make a few dollars. He'd never report you. No. Nope. As long as you were doing something. But don't sneak to the park. But there were a couple down there. If they saw you out shoveling snow and not going to school, they'd turn you in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we, we also were fortunate enough to have the Verona Ambulance Unit organized. Yeah, that. I'm sure they're on local, they're on Church Street, and I guess that Bill Turner, Frank Bungarose, and my father, Frank Bartolo. Or Bartolo. your father, they, and they, Bill Duncan. And Bill Duncan, they, they organized it, and they got it, they got it going. Well, I became a life member of that because I figured uh, I had to do something when I came back from service. And... Uh, we had some very comical uh, calls. We had to pick up one person. I won't reckon, tell what his name was, but he owned a tavern in Verona. And uh, we'd pick him up, and he would be outside of his tavern 
like midnight, and we had to take him down to Mountainside Hospital, where we'd get down to Long Prairie, he says, you can let me out here. He wanted to go to the tavern there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then we had very serious ones, which uh, that's when we had to uh, exercise whatever we learned, tried to keep him alive until we got the people of the hospital. Whether I ever saved a life, I don't know, and if I did know, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was uh, an honor to be part of an organization serving the town, and a lot of these people, especially newcomers that come into Verona, and they complain about our service, our uh, the horn making too much noise. Uh, let me tell you something. When that fire, if you're a victim, and you need first aid when that horn goes off. Is a you have a real feeling of relief. They're on their way, and I don't care if the horn blew 50 times. That's right. Uh, for the victim, it means a lot, and uh, I know it's inconvenient, especially if you live near the horn yeah, in the center well, of town. That's rough. Well, the business association, you know, going back when I was uh, I was in it from. 1948 to 58, we had members like Henry Percival, Lou Weirdo, Jack Farley, Al Sandine. What was that? Uh, business Association. Oh, okay. And uh, we we got organized there in the beginning. Uh, we started the Fourth of July fireworks. We got that rolling. The, the Labor Day picnic in the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was to try and keep people from being going and uh, riding around and all over and going on the highways. And then uh, that, uh, we also came up with a particular uh, 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 Oh, and then we also. They, they, we, we got them to upgrade on the Christmas decorations because they were kind of lean for a while. And, you know, we all had to participate and kick in. And, and, and the town didn't put most of the money up, most of the, you know. But we got that going and, you know, we had, we had a good organization. We even at one time tried and get a uh, member of Tip Garrity with the bus. Oh, yes. Well, before Pleasantdale and Cedar Grove got big, big in business and, and they had a centers, we were going to try and run a bus to Pleasantdale and, you know, certain times and back and forth into Cedar Grove. But when, you know, Tim, he, he had a, Tim had to get the, another bus that one, and then he figured it all out what a fare would be and everything and how much we would have to kick in, well, it was too expensive. But before that, we used to get a lot of other people from Pleasantdale. Oh, yes, some Cedar other Road. people came over here. You know, from Goldman's and Greens. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first came back from service, we had the VFW meet at Mor Tom Morley's. That's right. Well. There wasn't too much of a meeting held there. We ended up having our meetings at the ambulance unit. That's right. And uh, TV started then. There wasn't too much interest. Uh, I was a commander of Verona Post, which didn't uh, mount to too much. But uh, we ended up merging with uh, Cedar Grove, Cedar Grove, which was the best thing. And. Um, I remember going up to uh, the sanatorium and the different ones that volunteered to sell poppies. I never forget the hard work they did to get a few dollars to benefit our veterans in hospitals and so forth. And there's one lady up there, Loretta Fetch. I think she sold over a thousand poppies to people that visited up at the sanatorium. And, um, but it was a what I'm trying to put across, we were really a very, very close-knit yeah. town. And now people are busy, they, uh, you can't blame them, they, they have to pay taxes that are 
going out of the ceiling. Um, most, a lot of your senior citizens can't continue to live in the town. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of people that don't care. If they can't afford to live here, move. Well, I can, fortunately, I can still live here, but I can feel sorry for the people that can. That's right. And uh, when I bought my house, I paid, uh, I think it was eighteen two fifty for it. And um, now it's, uh, I think I was paying uh, maybe two or three hundred dollars a year taxes. No more. Now I'm paying well over eight thousand. Yeah, that's everybody in that ballpark. And, uh, that whenever the poly, whenever they run for office here in town, we're going to cut the taxes. Well, I don't know. They're cutting it the wrong way. <laughs> well, they all say they're going to do that. <laughs> they didn't say which way they were going to go. Uh, the other thing that we did in the, in, in the Green Acres is was uh, when Ange came back from Europe, he had seen Halloween time. They would paint pictures on all the windows and all the different stores and. And so there would be no egg throwing or, you know, chalk or soap or everything. Um, so we started that at the Green Acres. Oh, that, that's continued now. It's still mm -hmm. continued. And it just grew, you know, and, and it's worked. You know, in fact, we were fortunate enough never to have any problems, but that helped. Mm -hmm. It certainly helped. And we have... Uh, I guess when we first started the football with football, we went to the Suburban Conference. Mm -hmm. and that was Glen Ridge, Madison, Summit, Milburn, Caldwell, and Verona. The six teams. Yeah, Doc never got involved with football. No, he was soccer. Well, we won the, you know, with Doc, we won a few state championships. And I can give him credit for all that. And they've won them since then, too. Yeah, you know, soccer was the main sport when I was there. Well, football didn't come in until 39. They had a scrub team in, 30, in 1938. In 39, uh, the season started, the football team started. What's the biggest th the thing you'll remember about Verona? Biggest thing? Well, I remember Dave Slayback, one of our early mayors, that was elected so many times I couldn't count. And uh, there were a couple people killed on Bloomfield Avenue, one of our policemen. And uh, anyway, they imposed a 20 mile an hour speed limit right. on Bloomfield Avenue. And Dave Slayback made sure it was enforced. He got out there and chased the cars himself. <laughs> well, he, he I, I remember him. I was young then, you know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I remember him. He was there a long time. He's been office yes. very long. But he was a good mayor. He was a damn good mayor, and he'd tell you he was a damn <laughs> good mayor. <laughs>
teachers up. She was a good person. He knew who to go to learn something from. Oh, he did. But I'll tell you, Miss Biggs was tough. Well, maybe with you. <laughs> uh, no, she was. She was tough. She was good. She was no. They were Miss Casabona. Oh, she was a good teacher. Yeah. That was at Lanning. Well, we're, we're all, all yeah. the teachers up there. You remember, as you, as uh, we talk here, we remember the the good teachers and the ones in Lanning Avenue. Every, we remember every one of their names. Yeah, I know. It was <laughs> but how about Mrs. Van Houten, the gym te the female gym teacher? Well, I never had her. Well, we never had her. The girls did. Yeah. But. Uh, she was there forever. Um, but the teachers were, you. I wonder if the kids can remember all their teachers' names now. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we, we were small enough then. We were small enough and we remembered them. And then we had... Uh, I'm trying to think. Did we miss anybody, any teachers? I don't think so. No, I don't think... Do you remember uh, the McCuskers? Sure. I think I'm going to put the letter. I have a letter from, uh, I had a letter a couple of years ago from Harry McCusker. And during World War II, I'd like to get the town to uh, recognize uh, Harry McCusker because uh, during World War II he flew, he ferried planes from the United States to Europe, to England, and uh, he wrote a couple of books. I think I have a couple of them. And in his letter to me, which was about five years ago, he recalls uh, hiking up to the second mountain in the White Rock. And uh, it's, I'd like that story adopted because uh, I have it somewhere. I'll get it to the town. But um, it, he passed away about, oh, I guess a year ago. Yeah. And uh, the McCusker family was one of the original ones in the drama. That's right. Like the Elphicks and the, you know, yeah, so about, many families. How about the farms we had here? The what? The farms. Oh, yeah, and Jacobus. Yeah, and Grove Avenue. And another one, didn't it? Do you remember after World War II, uh, they had the barracks up on Grove Avenue? Yeah, sure. You didn't hear about the ones that went up there one uh, night about midnight or after and sounded reveille? No. I wasn't part of it, but I knew about it. And there were shoes and everything thrown out of the barracks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, during the war, uh, Glenn Novak and I worked for Jacobus. Uh -huh. And, and he, he taught us how to be a farmer. I'll tell you, remember, his son was a good ball player. Yeah, I remember all, a lot of the Jacobuses, Hathaways. Oh, yeah. So I, I think if I sat down, I could write all their names out. You probably could. I wonder what happened to them all. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, Bucky not only did well in sports here, but also in Rupter, Bucky Hatchet, also became president of the senior class at Rupter's. Where is he now? He lives down in, uh, off, what is it, Monroe down there on, off the turnpike. That, that the village for the seniors. They should interview him. That's you're right. <laughs> you're right. He can he, 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 he was good. And one thing that I'll never retire. I don't believe in it. And I don't know whether you do, but if you do, change. <coughs> uh, I, I hate it. I, I, uh, I dislike it. I shouldn't say that. I still uh, do appraisals for banks and lawyers and whoever really? for uh, coin collections. And uh, I help a lot of 
people start a coin collection. And let me tell you, if more kids had more hobbies, it doesn't have to be stamp collecting, but if they had more hobbies, they'd get in less trouble. Well, and uh, I'll be happy to start any of them in a collection. That's, that's good. I hope you get some takers. Well, I have some already. <laughs> yeah, good. But, you know, the thing also, we were brought up, you know, after the war, it was innocent years. I mean, we, the, the, the things that they have now, they have everything. Uh. They, and, you know, and they also have the bad things. And that, that's where the trouble starts. The big trouble is too much money. Too much money. And, and With some people. Yeah. And uh, it's too bad that more of the young people don't have an afternoon job or something to pay part of their education. I'm sure that you had to pay part of your education when you got out of school. <laughs> we, we, we always worked. See, you were more fortunate than I was. My dad died in 36, and uh, uh, Social Security was just starting then. And uh, Mom died without any benefits at all at that time. And I was the youngest. You were the youngest. I was the youngest. But we all worked. My, my brothers worked. Elmer went to college. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we made it. You had, to, you had to be tough. And uh, I hope that we never have a recession or another uh, a depression because I don't think a lot of the people can handle it. They're not, they're they might. I hope they can. Well, I don't know about that either. Uh, but we were fortunate. Of course, we didn't have TV at that time. <laughs> T TV, I, I enjoy the sports on TV, but I don't know. When you came, um, when you were in high school, they didn't have TV. Nope. And, and, and you know, there's one, another thing. What most and of we us, got by without it. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy the sports. That's about the only thing I like on it. But uh, that they have too much. So God, God bless them. They have it. But well, some of them know how to utilize it. And yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, the kids we know on our street here, they're terrific kids. We have terrific neighbors, and that's one of the reasons I haven't uh, looked to move out of Verona. Our neighbors here are terrific. Uh, they, um, when we moved into this house, I think we were the youngest ones. Really? Yeah. And uh, now we're probably the, just about the oldest ones. But they look out for, our neighbors look out for us. Good. We look out for them. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's what it should be. Yeah, I go to Joe Tucci. I remember in 36.